Okay, so now let us come back and look at a little bit of um, accurate geometry of the orientation of these partial Berger vectors, the full dislocation Berger vectors and how they will uh, form the uh, or and see whether they are energetically favorable or not. Okay, so, let us uh, look at the orientation. So, this is the original Berger vector B naught which we are taking the bottom line there are three possibilities for each plane. We are taking just one of these and it will be possible for all the three. We will come back to find out how to identify all the three, but for now we are just sticking with one particular Berger vector. So, this is the Berger vector that we are looking at the one, one of the possible one of the three possible on the 1 1 1 plane. So, B naught equal to A by 2 bar 1 0 1 and if you uh, look at the other possibility other uh, Berger vectors then we know that all of them are lie in a triangle which is a equilateral triangle. So, it was something like this I am not drawing it over here this is just for getting a uh, reference frame for the two other dislocations that I am about the partial vectors that we I am about to draw. So, now the two other vectors we know that they form something like this. So, this is one partial vector we will call it B 1 this is another we will call it B 2 and looking at this geometry you can clearly identify that this will be 30 degrees. This is the total is 60 degrees and this has to be half of this. So, this will come out to be 30 degrees and therefore, we can say that this B 1 and yeah another thing was that this B naught breaks into B 1 which is equal to a by 6 plus B 2 Now, let us compare their energy the first thing is are they energetic is this reaction So, that is the first question we need to answer. So, we will take the energy is proportional to B square relation. So, we will take B square and so this will become so this is the energy for this. for this one it will be 2 square plus 1 square plus 1 square is equal to 6. So, this becomes 6. Similarly, here we will get a square by 36 into 6. So, on the left hand side we have a square by 2 and we are comparing it with a square by 6 plus a square by 6 which is equal to a square by 3. Now, clearly which one is smaller? So, this is a square by 2 is greater or a square by 3 is smaller. So, this means this is this reaction is energetically favorable. Okay, so, this is something that we assumed in our previous uh, when, we, when we are looking at the PPT when we were trying to understand whether this can actually form or not. So, yes energetically this is favorable 
Now we have not yet gone to the issue of stacking fault that will be created which will add another energy. But for now we, we are just looking at these two partials getting formed. So, you know, as, so, as far as these partials getting formed are the question arises for these two partials it is completely possible. And uh, again I am not showing here the exact geometry or I am not trying to derive the geometry, but you can clearly find out that if this is a by 2 bar 1 0 1 then b 1 and b 2 would be of this form. And uh, there is a very you can say ready to go uh, model available which is called Thomson's tetrahedron model which will come later on which describes these in a very easy way or where you have all this in a uh, very easy compendium. So, this is possible. Now, let us look at what, what else will happen when we have a geometry like this. Other thing we said was that there may be a repulsion taking place. Now, does that repulsion take place? That is the question that we want to answer now. So, this is our uh, original Berger vector and these are the partial Berger vectors. Now, this has some component along this line and we assume that this is edge. So, there will be one uh, and this is b 1, this is b naught, this is b 2. So, there will be a component of b 1 which will be parallel and there will be a component of b 1 which will be perpendicular to b, b naught. So, B 2, so this is this one will be like this B 2 perpendicular and B 2 will also have a parallel component. So, we see that we can dissociate or we can look on B 1 and B 2 as if they had two components, one parallel to B naught and the other perpendicular to B naught. And the reason is that we then we will be able to dissociate them into edge, uh, edge dislocation and screw dislocation. In this case we know that B naught the Berger vector B naught that we have taken is assuming a edge dislocation. Okay. So, we will uh, we'll clearly ex explicitly mention that that original dislocation is edge in character. Okay. So, if the original dislocation is edge in character then B 1 and B 2 will also B 1 parallel and B 2 parallel will also be edge in character. And since the dislocation line it means that the dislocation line is like this and therefore, the perpendicular ones by default become screw dislocation. So, So, B 1 parallel and B 2 parallel are edge dislocations and B 1 perpendicular and B 2 perpendicular are screw dislocation. Another thing is that B 1 parallel and B 2 parallel are in the same direction while B 1 perpendicular and B 2 perpendicular are in opposite direction. And if you remember from the first part that whenever there is dislocations uh, of this kind edge or screw of the opposite kind are together they will attract and when the same kind are there they will repel. So, opposites attract this is something I am deriving from our earlier part 1 lecture and similar repel. So, there will be repulsion between these two part and attraction between these two parts. Now, before that let us see what will be the Berger vector for this. So, the B 1 parallel and perpendicular which means B 1 parallel and this time I am meaning the magnitude wise will be equal to B 2 
So, if this is 30 degrees that we have already mentioned and this is B 1. So, this will be 30 cos 30 degrees the parallel ones and again we are talking about magnitude B 1 times cos 30 which will be equal to B 2 cos 30. On the other hand when we take B 1 perpendicular magnitude it will be equal to B 2 perpendicular magnitude which will be equal to B 1 sin 30 because we will be taking this one and again we are taking just the magnitude and it will be equal to B 2 sin 30. Now, based on this we are in a position to find what will be the net force acting between these two partial dislocations. So, this is our question does repulsion take place. So, we are trying to find the uh, net force acting on this. So, this is like this and now we have repulsion, repulsion between these two parallel ones which are nothing but the edge with dislocations and we have seen this is the Berger vector the magnitude of this. So, we can write it like this we will call it B 1 B 2 and B 1 B 2 uh, over here we will translate it to just B. So, we have B naught and now magnitude wise this will be called B just to just for our easy way of writing I have transformed B 1 B 2 to B and only the magnitude part of course, the vector part will always be the as it is. Since this is edge dislocation we can write it like this and the attraction is between the screw dislocation components. So, it will be minus g b square sin square 30 and there will be no 1 minus nu term. So, this is the f attraction term the net force acting would can be now written like g b square by 4 pi d. So, this is the net force acting and if you look at the values you can see that uh, let us put nu equal to 0 0.5 and cos square 30 we can uh, that becomes 1 by 2 and therefore, this becomes g b square by sin square 30 is 1 by 4. So, this becomes 3 by 4 g b square 4 pi d. So, this is a net force acting and you can see this is a positive value which means that there is a net repulsion between the two partial dislocations. So, there they will keep moving on, but how far now that is that will be determined by how big a uh, stacking fault region they create. Now, stacking fault region will have energy now that energy would be given by that energy is given by uh, this is given by gamma gamma S f e which will be in the units joule per meter square which we can also translate as Newton per meter that is force per unit length acting which will be same as the units of F net. So, the energy per unit area that we see is effectively also the force per unit length that will be acting along the edges and therefore, we can directly relate F net to S F E that will give us the equilibrium. When we do this we will be able to directly get the equilibrium d value. 
So, in here it is equal to 3 by 4 and implies and now I will switch to the red because now we have d equilibrium is equal to 3 by 4 g b square 4 pi gamma s f e. So, this will be the equilibrium width. Now, I gave you the values in the in the last lecture of the previous module of d equilibrium. Now, this using that value of the d equilibrium one can back calculate what should be the gamma s f e. So, that is in fact, one of the ways that the stacking fault energy of different materials are calculated. You can look at the T m images and find what is the equilibrium thickness of this stacking fault region between two partials and that will be more or less constant for a given material and why it will be constant because gamma s f e is constant. And so, from calculating this d equilibrium value you would be able to calculate d the, the gamma s f e value for these materials. Now, here you would have seen that we assumed that our dislocation to begin with was a edge dislocation. Now, next what we want to do is what if original dislocation was screwed screw in character. The overall derivation you would see would follow similar lines, but the result would be a little bit different. Okay. So, to begin with we will again uh, draw the structure the geometry of the dislocations and the partial dislocations. So, this is this is our B naught and the magnitude wise this is B this is B there is of course, uh, B 1 and B 2, but we are just magnitude ok let us not confuse it we will call it still call it B 1 and we will call it B 2 and they will have again a parallel component and anti parallel component. Now, this one here is screw in character ok and therefore, what we will have is that B 1 parallel is still B 1 cos 30, but this is for screw dislocation and B 1 perpendicular is equal to B 1 sin 30, but this is for edge dislocation and this will be equal to B 2 cos 30, this will be equal to B 2 sin 30. and over here we will replace b 1 b 2 and the magnitude by by the magnitude b. So, this becomes so our f repulsive is equal to g b square and that is between the parallel which is these two these are our parallel which are now screw. So, let me write it screw over here and these are edge. So, the repulsion it is between the screw dislocations and we will write it as cos square 30. Now, there will be no 1 minus neo term over here it will only be 4 pi d and f attractive would be between the edge dislocations which will be g b square sin square 30 and remember we are taking b 1 and b 2 magnitude as b. and this is edge. So, there will be 1 minus nu. So, this is the attractive term. So, minus sign. Okay. So, now this f net what is f net equal to this plus this and therefore, this will be equal to g b square Now, again we will put in the values the usual values cos square 30 is 1 by 2, this is 1 by 4, this is 
1 and 0.5. So, this becomes 1 by 2 and what do we get? This is approximately equal to 0. So, stacking fault region unlikely for screw. This is what these equations tell us. So, we have seen uh, so far in this lecture that the dislocation, the partial dislocations do repel and they can create a stacking fault region and based on the width of the stacking fault region, we can say what will be the equilibrium. We also saw that this particular derivation is true if when we use this uh, type of equation is true only when we assume the dislocations to be edge in character. If we take the dislocations to be screw in character, then we do not get a dislocation or we do not get repulsion, meaning there will be no stacking fault region created. Now, the next part is that I have used only one particular, if you go back here, we have used only one particular B1 and one particular B2 and one particular B0. But I said that there are three other Berger vectors and all of these can dissociate. So, how do we find what is the different possibilities? Now, geometrically you can find all of these, but there is a still and uh, geometrically only there is uh, another method which is possible and it is called Thomson's tetrahedron. Thanks. Thank you.